Now let's see some examples. Is this work? Lifting weights is considered as work. In the example on the left, this boy is pushing hard against the wall. The wall will not move. Even though the boy is exerting a lot of force, we say it is not considered work. In the example on the right, you have a cyclist. He is moving forward. Yes, we say this is work. There are so many examples we can take. But to sum it up, we can say that if the force applied is moving the object over a certain distance, there is work. But if the force applied is not moving the object, there is no work. When you study examples of work, you notice that it's involving unbalanced forces all the time. Let's relate this to the previous lesson with Newton's first law. In Newton's first law, we discussed that objects at rest stay at rest and objects in motion stay in motion unless there's an unbalanced force. Now, this unbalanced force will cause acceleration. It will cause movement, motion. Acceleration is change. So the distance is never zero in this case. We always say, yes, there is work in this case. So we relate work with having unbalanced forces. But let's say if I'm standing still, even if I stand for an hour, the forces on, acting on me are balanced. I have no acceleration, no motion, my distance is zero because I'm standing still, and there is no work in this case. You will always see work when there is unbalanced forces. Here's another example with a toy car. If you and your friend are pushing this toy car in opposite directions, when the toy does not move, this is not work. There is no work because you and your friend, your forces are balanced. So this force is equal to this force. In the second example on the right, you have unbalanced forces. In this case, the force you are exerting is much stronger than your friend's force. So the car will move to the right. After this, we can conclude that there is a new concept of total work. So it's not always just me performing a task. Maybe there is another force acting on the same object. So I gave you the example of your, your push on the car and your friend's push on the car. Positive work and negative work meeting. What will happen? One side must be stronger. One side will win and will move the object in its direction. Another example, the tug of war game, when two teams are pulling a rope, one team will have a greater force. This team's positive work will change the direction of this rope in their favor. So they are winning in this case. Total work, we say, is the sum, okay, the addition of positive and negative work. Here, once we added them, it was clear that the first team won. Now we come to the idea of friction. Previously, we said that friction opposes motion. Whenever there is contact between two solids, there is friction. This friction opposing your motion, we say the work being done is always negative. So whenever you have friction, you have negative work.